Hello everybody. Thank you for having me here. I am grateful to be a part of this event. So, I would like to begin with a little introduction about myself. My name is Nishtha Sharma. I am currently pursuing a bachelor's degree in communication design at the National Institute of Design Kurukshetra in India. In recent years, I've been exploring different visual mediums through which I can tell stories and I can tell my ideas. I enjoy working out with projects that allow me to focus on the cohesiveness of different minute elements and I think this led to my inclination towards designing forms and typography. A little note for the audience, focus of this presentation will be on learnings and experiences from my first typeface design project. So before jumping into the whole project, I would like to introduce you to one exercise that I did along with my batchmates. I believe a study about forms and letter forms can be a good start before actually uh, working on your typeface because study of letter forms can help us sensitize ourselves about every little curve and angle that affects the visual form of the character and then that can add more meaning to the information. So. So what I was doing in this exercise was I was I was just exploring the base structure of the character and then I was understanding how a character can hold different attributes in it and then how these different attributes add different values to the character. So as you can see uh, these are some of my letter forms that I created here. Um, here I'm trying to understand the potential of these letter forms to create the typeface based on them. Now this is the chosen one. Um, just a little little breakdown of the attributes that I could find in it. As you see the whole form itself has this upward movement, upward direction to it. And even the counters have this tension, have, have this angle slanted movement to them. Um, there are pointed terminals, there is thick to thin stroke weight value in it and I think the width of the form itself acts as one attribute. Now uh, I think journey from this point onwards is where you list down the attributes that you want to work with and then you start inducing these attributes in all the characters possible. So. So what I started was, uh, I, I, I started with roughly drawing the structures and then I'm, I'm just trying to understand what will be the treatment of the forms in my typeface and these are some of the initial sketches. So here I'm also figuring out where in what characters I can exaggerate and where I have to limit myself. And so yeah, now after a point, uh, you don't uh, see characters as uh, as individual identity but you also you also start looking typeface as a cohesive uh, project in itself and when you do that uh, a lot of other attributes also come in play and thinking about these little attributes can enhance the experience of your typeface so there have been uh, there are uh, these uh, attributes that I thought while working on my project which I'm going to discuss here. So, so one was stance. Uh, so like every human being has his style of walking. Every typeface holds its own stance. So when I was working on the project, I was thinking what posture will my typeface be in and how, how I should move these lines along the structure to, uh, to, to attain that posture. So that is one thing. Next will be the tone. Uh, it's a well said line that typography can add more meaning to the text. And I feel tone also decides the purpose and usage of your typeface and deciding the tone while working on the letter forms can channelize all your decisions that, that you will make throughout the process. Another thing that I want to mention, so my mentor explained this to me. He, he pointed out that you can actually connect a uh, type to different setups based on, on your personal understanding. So you can connect it to architecture, you can connect it to music. So as you see uh, the images of two spaces here, so he was explaining me how a person exploring these two experiences uh, uh, will, exploring these two places will have 
different experiences and will have different findings while going through the space. Similarly, a person consuming your typeface can have a different experience, can have different findings. And you deciding what it will be can be a good way to direct yourself ahead in the project. Now, as I move up, moved ahead, um, so I now I started uh, uh, seeing these letters together as words, and I feel because because of the upward movement in my characters, it was easy for me to to make uh, characters like that where one character can direct uh, can direct to the next character, uh, and I think the harmonious flow between letter forms can create rhythm while reading the text. And another thing will be that forms are not only about black shapes, but they're also about uh, negative spaces that they leave. And these negative spaces cohesively can create the texture or, or we, what we call it gray value of the typeface. And then again, gray value can decide how people are going to consume your typeface and what meaning are they going to think out of it. So. So another thing, since this was my first typeface design project, uh, I restricted myself to only focus on constant stroke width because, um, because I wanted to understand the structure better without the play of high contrast strokes. And so yeah, so I decided I will only work on constant uh, stroke width. Now, um, I think along with along with um, thinking about all these attributes thinking about attributes of a letter form attributes of your typeface balancing balancing structure is is again one of the core tasks that i was doing and then i think it's a good skill to have where where you can you can figure out why a form is not working and you can implement uh, small changes in the form to make it attain uh, attain the crisp posture that you want so yeah so what i was doing eventually after coming to one point where i decided a language a system for my typeface where i've listed down uh, all possible angles and all possible curves and i've listed down the treatments that i'm going to give to those curves and i think deciding this system for all these elements can be a good um, good um, understanding to build on about your typeface so that so that you can move further in it without more confusion on what you exactly want it to have so yeah and lastly another thing that was uh, going in the mind and i was working on was that form should not lose its integrity in any usage scenario so so what what i was trying to do was as you as you see i started with um, working on a4 sheets and then eventually i i i started working on half imperial sheets and this was done to enlarge the characters and just to see if they lose their integrity when you enlarge them and if they do you make these small refinements uh, and these changes uh, so that your typeface can be more fe feasible to every uh, usage scenario and i think this is a good good way to make your typeface more feasible so so yeah uh, a little about the typeface itself Tuoco is the name of the typeface project that I'm doing um, a story about the name will be so there is no dictionary meaning to the word Tuoco I started uh, creating these random words and then I was uh, I was speaking them aloud and then I was trying to connect the tone of the word to the tone of my um, typeface so that's how I decided on naming it Tuoco. Tuoco is a humanist sans serif typeface it embodies visual attributes of direction and visual texture to communicate the character of the typeface so in the span of five weeks this is where I have reached uh, there I know there's a lot to be done uh, to complete my typeface but so the thing that I like about this process is that it gives you the scope of refining it to an unending level 
because whenever I land my eyes on these forms, I see the scope of refinement and then I start working on it. So I've been going, I've been like stepping ahead and then going back in the process continuously. And so yeah, there there's a lot of, there. I have to still work on a lot of characters yet to complete my typeface. But I think I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to enjoy the process of following a system in all the letter forms. So yeah, that is it. Now, now again, I would like to just pay some focus on the letter form exercise. So the exercise that I did at that time, so learnings from that exercise has not, not just helped me in this project, but it has helped me in other projects, uh, other graphic design or other typography project because what it does is it it gives you an understanding where you can answer yourself uh, about what is that is that form right is it working or not so uh, whenever I feel like I, I practice this as my personal exercise where I create these these letter forms and then I answer myself on what I have created and uh, is it is it is it working what is not working and then where where can i use a form like that and then what changes should i make so so i think it's just a so this is just a collection of the letter form that i drew in my time as a personal exercise now lastly i would i would like to talk about another project that i did because I, I I used the learnings from the typeface project into into doing this, so this was a brand identity project that I did as part of my classroom assignment. Again, I think the process has been same where where you think about the meaning, a message that you want to communicate, and then you start thinking about how can you how can you translate that meaning um, into into the form. So I think um, now it doesn't has to be a, a big a big change. I feel that understanding where you feel that a small a small curve or a small element can communicate a whole idea is where is where you gain that understanding that even small changes can do a lot to the form. So as you see, this art festival was um, for for street art and then i wanted to create forms where i can gel them into each other and then they can have a flow in them and then as you see the the twist in the letter forms uh is is the usp of this uh, brand identity and then this is what people are going to relate it to in future and then this is what they're going to remember so yeah and then as per the requirement of the project i again started inducing those those elements of twist, those elements of curves, uh, in other letter forms as well. So, so yeah. Again, I just have to say um, that the process, the process has been same based on based on the process of creating letter forms, because because I think the whole whole play comes where where you can actually think of little shapes that can communicate a visual a word like idea that can communicate your words into pictures and once you're able to do that i think rest is just about the practice where where you learn how to refine it where you learn how you can how you can um you know make your form more feasible more more uh, strong in sense of that you can use it in any scenario so as you see the process of this particular brand identity form started with i am i'm so so this is i'm trying to uh, kind of induce the curve into the form and then i'm trying to refine it i'm trying how open the curve should be and how small it should be to to kind of you know to to just to come to that sweet sweet spot where it just looks perfect in any use scenario so I think this was it. I have really enjoyed the process of finding little details and uh, implementing them. I I hope people who are interested in this, um, it was helpful. Um, thank you for thank you for listening to me. I I hope this was worth listening. Thank you again for uh, giving me this opportunity. Thank you.